Hello and welcome, Brandon here. Thanks for choosing my video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you think someone you know can also benefit by watching, please share. And as always, please subscribe. I appreciate it very much. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we are in video two of logistic regression. Now, if you did not watch video one, I highly recommend going back and watching that one and then coming back to this one. So the first thing we're gonna do in this video is just a basic review of probability. So remember that probability is the outcomes of interest divided by the number of all possible outcomes. Let's look at a few examples. So let's say we flip a fair coin. The probability of heads is one over two. So the outcome of interest is flipping heads up out of two possibilities, heads or tails. So the probability is 0.5. How about rolling a fair die? So what's the probability of rolling a one or a two? So that's two outcomes of interest divided by six possible, one, two, three, four, five, or six. That's one over three, or a probability of 0.333 or one third. How about a deck of playing cards, standard playing cards? So what's the probability of randomly pulling out a card that's a diamond? So there are 13 of each suit, 13 diamonds, 13 hearts, 13 clubs, and 13 spades in a normal deck of cards. So the probability of pulling out a diamond is 13 out of those 52, which is obviously one fourth or 0.25. So again, that's just basic probability. And really that's all you need to understand about probability to grasp the basics of logistic regression. Okay, so that was probability. Now, what about odds? What are odds? You hear them every day. So the odds is the probability of something occurring divided by the probability of it not occurring. So the probability of an event divided by the probability of a non-event, that event not occurring. So we can think of it as the odds is P, the probability, divided by one minus P. Remember, probability can only be as high as one. So if P is the probability, the probability of it not happening is one minus P. Let's go ahead and look at some of our other examples again in this context. So how about flipping a fair coin? So the odds of getting heads is 0.5, that's the probability of getting a heads of the event occurring, divided by 0.5, which again is the probability of it not occurring which in this case is getting a tails. So for this fair coin flip, it's 0.5 divided by 0.5 or one. So the odds are one. Sometimes you'll see them written one to one or one colon one. So that just means that the odds are even. And that makes sense in this case because we're flipping a fair coin. So how about rolling our fair die from before? So what are the odds of a one or a two? Now the probability of a one or a two is 0.33333 repeating. We found that out from the last slide. So that means the odds of not getting a one or a two is 0.66666 repeating. So we divide that out, that's one divided by two or 0.5. So in this case, the odds of getting a one or a two is one half or 0.5, or you can write it as one colon two. Now how about our deck of playing cards? So what are the odds of pulling a diamond card out? Now we found that the probability is 0.25, so our one fourth. So that means the probability of not pulling out a diamond card is the remainder or 0.75. So that's one third or 0.333 repeating, or the odds are one colon three. So again, the odds are related to the probability, but it's expressed in a different way. It's the probability of an event occurring divided by the probability of that same event not occurring. So we've talked about probability, we've talked about odds, now we're gonna talk about the odds ratio. Now the odds ratio is exactly what it says it is. It's a ratio of two odds. So remember our fair coin flip from the last slide. The probability of heads is 0.5, and therefore the odds of getting heads is one, or one to one. Now let's say we have an unfair coin or a loaded coin. Now in this coin, the probability of getting heads is 0.7, not 0.5. That means the odds of getting heads is 0.7 
divided by the probability of not getting heads, which in this case is only 0.3. So the probability of tails is 0.3. So we divide those and we end up with the odds of getting heads is 2.333 repeating in this loaded coin. So a fair coin, the odds of heads are one to one and a loaded coin flip down here at the bottom. In this case, the odds are 2.333 to one in favor of getting heads. So the odds ratio is just a ratio of two odds. Now, if we wrote everything out, it would look like this. So on the top, we have the odds for the first event. So remember, this is just how we figured out odds from the slide before. So the probability of event one divided by one minus the probability of event one. So that is the odds for that event there on the top. Then on the bottom, we have the same thing for the other event. So we have the probability for the event on the bottom divided by one minus the probability of that event. So we just have two odds stacked on top of each other. Now in this case, we could just go ahead and plug everything in. Now I usually put the larger odds on the top or the larger probability on top. You don't have to, it doesn't affect it in any way. It just, you just wanna make sure you interpret it correctly once you do the calculation. So I'm gonna put the loaded coin on top. So we have 0.7 divided by 0.3, that's our loaded coin, divided by our fair coin, which is 0.5 divided by 0.5. So we go ahead and multiply those two fractions together and we end up with 0.35 divided by 0.15. And when we do that division, we have an odds ratio of 2.333. Now in this case, that comes out very easy because the fair coin odds is one. So that is why the loaded coin flip is the same as the odds ratio over here on the right. That just happens to be how it is in this example by sheer luck, basically. So what does this mean? It means the odds of getting heads on the loaded coin are 2.33 times greater than their fair coin. But this is how the probability, odds, and odds ratio work. And it is central to understanding and interpreting the output from logistic regression. So speaking of the odds ratio, let's go ahead and talk about the role of the odds ratio in logistic regression. Now in this slide, we will use a very brief, very simple example. It is not related to our overarching problem on home mortgages, but again, it's just to give you a quick insight into how to interpret the odds ratio from the output of a computer if you need to do that very quickly. So what is the odds ratio? Well, in logistic regression, the odds ratio for a variable, an independent variable, represents how the odds change with a one unit increase in that variable, holding all other variables constant. Now, if you're new to logistic regression, that may not make a lot of sense right now, but hopefully in the next minute or two, it will. So let's look at a fictitious example. Let's say we were looking at a study that involved a person's body weight and whether or not they have sleep apnea. Now, if you don't know sleep apnea is a condition where people stop breathing momentarily and often repeatedly in their sleep. And of course that can cause a lot of health problems. So we're gonna look at how body weight is related to whether or not a person is diagnosed with sleep apnea or not. So we did this analysis and in SPSS or R or Minitab, whatever, our weight variable had an odds ratio in the output of 1.07. Now, what does that mean? Well, this means that a one pound increase in body weight increases the odds of having sleep apnea by a factor of 1.07. Now, that also means 7%. So 07 is 7%. If it were by a factor of two, that would mean a 100% increase. That's how we can kind of go back and forth between odds and percentages. Now, this is not very high, because we're looking at only one pound increments in body weight, which is actually a relatively small way to measure. Now using that information, we can also find out some other things for other amounts of body weight. So a 10 pound increase in body weight increases the odds to 1.98, or increases the odds by 98%, or almost doubles a person's odds of having sleep apnea. And a 20 pound increase in body weight raises the odds to 3.87, or by almost a factor of four, 
and we will learn how to do those calculations later. And the thing about logistic regression is that this holds true at any point in the weight spectrum. So if I went from a weight of 200 pounds to 201 pounds, it would be 1.07. If I went from 150 pounds to 151 pounds, the odds ratio would still be 1.07. If I went from a 10 pound increase, let's say 200 to 210, that would have the same odds ratio of 1.98 as going from 130 to 140, it would still be the odds ratio of 1.98. So the odds ratio holds true for any interval, that same interval along the weight spectrum. And again, we'll talk about that in future videos as we go forward. Now the last slide is a warning. It is very important to separate probability and odds. In the previous example, a person gaining 20 pounds increases their odds of sleep apnea by almost a factor of four, regardless of their starting weight. Because remember, that 20 pound increase applies to any point in the weight spectrum. However, the probability of having apnea is lower in people with lower body weight to begin with. So why is that important? So while the odds are four times greater, the probability may still be low. We have to separate odds and probability. So even though gaining 20 pounds increases the odds by a factor of four, the reality is, is that people with lower body weight have a starting probability that's low to begin with. So basically what this means is that the odds can have a large magnitude change, even if the underlying probabilities are low. And here's the last example just off the top of my head. Let's say we have two probabilities. The first probability is that you are struck by lightning. The second probability is that you are hit by a meteor falling out of the sky. Now the probability of either one of those happening is minuscule, very, 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 very low. However, the probability of being struck by lightning is higher than being hit by a meteor falling out of the sky. So the odds of being hit by lightning are probably going to be much higher, even though the probabilities to begin with are very, very, very low. So we have to keep in mind the difference between probability and odds as we go forward interpreting logistic regression problems. So I'll see you in video number three. Thanks for watching.